I'm Adrienne Cheatham. I am a professional chef, and today I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know about deep frying. We are talking the right type of equipment, the right types of oil, and everything you need to get fully cooked, crispy results. This is Deep Frying 101. There are several different types of frying. Stir frying, pan frying, shallow frying, Technically sauteing is a type of frying, but deep frying is where it's at. There are things that can go wrong when frying. It can be undercooked on the inside, burned on the outside, greasy exterior, raw, soggy interior. But if you get it right, it is the best, most delicious result you will ever get. First things first, let's talk about equipment and oil, chapter one. Whenever you're deep frying, you wanna have all of your equipment set up and ready because things move very quickly. You don't have time to go look for a piece of equipment. You need to have it there waiting. First is the vessel for the oil. You want something that's heavy, distributes heat evenly, and has a nice thick bottom. I like enamel cast pots like this one. So these utensils are for lowering items into the hot oil and taking them out. You may not need all of them, but these are the standard pieces of equipment that work best to keep you safe. I have a slotted spoon, large tongs, a spider, small tongs or tweezers, and chopsticks for delicate items. The other most important piece that you need is a tray lined with paper towels to dismount your fried items onto. The paper towels are gonna absorb any excess oil and you need a place to put them as soon as they're ready. And also salt. When you're frying savory items, you wanna season them as soon as they come out of the oil while it's still warm and moist. I have a candy thermometer for keeping the temperature of the oil. Candy thermometers are meant to clip onto pots and go up to high temperatures, so they're ideal for this. You could also use a meat thermometer, but you just wouldn't be able to leave it submerged in the oil the whole time. Last, but certainly not least, is the oil itself. I like to use an oil that has a high smoke point, vegetable oil, avocado oil, anything within the range of 445 to 500 degrees. That way you know that your oil will not start to burn before you've cooked all of your items. Now that we've covered the basics and our station is all set up, let's get frying. You can literally fry just about anything, but today we are gonna fry shrimp. We're gonna do battered and breaded. We're gonna start with our battered because typically with batter, you wanna fry at a slightly lower temperature than with breaded. So we're gonna fry these at about 360 and our breaded at 375. So for the battered shrimp, I'm literally just gonna drop them into the bowl of batter and one by one, pick them up by the tail, shake off the excess and go right into the oil. Water and oil hate each other. That's what all this noise is about. When you're frying, you always wanna keep an eye on your thermometer. You wanna lower and raise the temperature to keep it steady. When you're heating up your oil, it's okay to turn it up to high heat to get it up to temperature, but then once you've reached it, turn the flame a little bit lower so it doesn't just get higher and higher because then you risk an oil fire. Nobody wants a big pot of oil to burst into flames. They only take about 30 seconds to one minute to cook. Right when you see them fully pink around the outside and curled in, you know that they're cooked. Dismount them and season them immediately while they're still warm and moist and the salt will actually stick to them. For chicken thighs or a larger item, they're gonna take much longer to cook. So you wanna go longer at a lower temperature, closer to 350. But if you have something that's small and cooks quickly, you wanna go fast at a higher temperature. That way you get the inside fully cooked without burning the outside. Our oil is up to temp at 375. I'm gonna start dropping in our breaded shrimp. One of the most dangerous things when people are frying is having excess moisture get into their oil. So you wanna make sure that your items are on the drier side before putting them in their oil to prevent a lot of bubbling and splatter. For the breaded shrimp, you're looking for the same thing, a golden brown exterior. And this is gonna take about a minute, maybe a few seconds over. So one of the other important things to note when you're frying is not to overcrowd your pot. 
If you put in too much at once, it's gonna lower your oil temperature. And when your oil temperature drops, your food is gonna soak up oil instead of cooking immediately. So you'll wind up with greasier, heavier food. And if your oil is too hot, you're gonna burn the outside before the interior is even cooked. This looks so golden brown and delicious, and I really just wanna eat this shrimp. Mm. Now that we're done frying, let's talk about what happens with all this oil. You can reuse your frying oil between three to five times. It really just depends on how dark it's gotten and how much debris is in there. If you strain it out when it's cool, you'll get much longer life out of your oil. But if you bring your oil to too high of a temperature, it'll start to degrade quicker. So you wanna watch for billowing smoke. When your oil gets smoky, you know it's getting too hot and burning and you might have to throw it away after that use. The only proper way to discard oil is to put it in containers with tight fitting lids and throw it in the trash. It can really mess up plumbing systems, so you never wanna pour it down the drain or down the toilet. Although that's what I was taught growing up, is that you put your oil and <laughs> flush it down the toilet. So seriously, frying food is one of the most delicious cooking methods that yields some of the best results, consistent, beautiful color all the way around. So if you're not frying at home, I don't know what you're waiting for. As much as I don't want to, I'll share this one. Does anybody want some shrimp? Mm. 